Hi there, welcome to my channel, A Country Life. I'm Jennifer, and today I am going to be running into the kitchen in just a second here because you guys clicked on a video on how to make cranberry pinwheel cookies. And I wanna show that to you, but guess what? I We homeschool, if you are new here, and my kids are actually watching a video on rocks and minerals right now, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to film, and then I'm just gonna do a voiceover for you. So I really hope that you enjoy this video, and be sure to check the description box below because today's video is a collaboration with Mandy in the making. She has so many good recipes on her channel and even if you don't um, think that you're looking for a new recipe to make, I definitely, definitely urge you to just go watch her channel because her cooking skill is just top notch and she is super fun to watch. Uh, she throws some cute humor in there. Her husband is fun and gives his um, his opinion of all of the meals that she makes and so that's always fun to watch. And in the description box below will be the link and there's going to be all kinds of recipes all on um, holiday or Christmas desserts. So please remember to do that at the end of the video. So to get started making cranberry pinwheels, I first just assemble my dry ingredients, one and a half cups of flour, a fourth teaspoon of baking powder, and a fourth teaspoon of salt, and get that mixed up. Then it's time to move over and work on the filling. So the filling is a half cup of ground up cranberries and a half cup of ground walnuts. So I just put both of those things together in my food processor, as you can see, and just um, pulsed it. I have Peter over here, he's pulsing it for me. And you're, you're gonna see that if you come to my videos. Um, you're gonna see the kids helping in the kitchen. It's oftentimes a busy place with lots going on. So I also need the zest of one orange. And so you can see I'm just using my little zester here. That was something I picked up at Pampered Chef years ago. So I need to put together the dough now. So I'm just going to put into my KitchenAid mixer one stick of butter and uh, three-fourths cup of sugar and get that all nice and blended together. It's really important when making cookies that you really give that plenty of time to mix the, the fat and the sugar together. I put in a teaspoon of vanilla as well and an egg and just give that a good blend. Put in all the dry ingredients. And here we are, it's already time to roll out the dough. So I don't typically chill my dough, I just find that if I use a gentle hand when rolling, I can get it to roll out nicely. So for this recipe, it's really important to shape your dough into a square to begin with because that is the end product. And I just, as you can see, what I do is I just kind of keep on pressing the dough into a square and rolling it until I get it to about a 12 inch square. There's a moment there where I'm gone, and that's because we have a busy household. Amber was working on scholarship applications and needed me to um, review one of her essays, so I had to run out real quick to do that. But I'm back now, and I mixed together three tablespoons of brown sugar and two teaspoons of milk, and then spread it all across the dough, leaving just a little bit of space um, at the edges. And then I just put my cranberry, walnut, and orange zest mixture on top, again spreading it nearly to the edge. And then I'm just going to roll it up as tight as I can. I step away for some wax paper, roll it up tightly, and place it in the refrigerator. So through the magic of YouTube, I am back. It was an hour for me, a second for you, and... I got out my dough. And so I just had that chill for about an hour, like I said. I set my oven to 375 degrees. I got out a pan here, and I am going to grease this because since this has in the, um, you know, in the center, it has the cranberries and it has the sugar. It is going to, you know, it has that chance of kind of caramelizing. So you definitely want to make sure that you spray your pan. 
so what I'm going to do here is just get this unrolled. And then I just grabbed some dental floss that I keep in the kitchen specifically for cooking and slicing different things like this. I'm just going to slide this underneath here and crisscross. Yes. Can I put away this tape and scissors? Okay, just a sec here. And can you tie my necklace? Mm hmm. Wait, that's cool. Isn't that neat? Wait, is that. What is that? Mom, what is that like stringy stuff? It is dental floss. Wait. Did you get that from the bathroom? Nope, this is the one I keep in the kitchen. Wait, is it actually like doctor? Stuff? Yeah, it's actual real dental floss. Yep. It's just I don't use it for my this one for my teeth. I use it here. So what I do is I just bring it up underneath. I bring it up underneath the dough. If you haven't ever seen this before, it works really slick. Then just crisscross it and give it a nice firm pull. Again, it does take a sec. It does take a little time to do this, but in the end it is worth it. <laughs> Okay, so the oven is, is preheated. I'm gonna pop these into the oven. I'm gonna set my timer for just about nine minutes and then check them. Alrighty, so there are the cookies in all their deliciousness glory. Oh my gosh. So remember to head down to the playlist in the description box. Hi Joe, and uh, go check out all the other Christmas and holiday dessert recipes that everybody's gonna be sharing. If you are new around the channel, this is Joseph, he's 11 years old. Mwah. We will get an extension cord and we are starting to get Hi. some things ready for Christmas. Kids are getting lights up around Yay. their bunk beds and that is it. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks for Bye. watching. I'd love to have you guys as new subscribers. So if you do, head on over to the community tab and say hello. Oh, we've got some colds going on here too. Head on over to the community tab, say hello and um, I look forward to meeting all you guys.